Hi, this is Steve from Open Flight Solutions. And today I'm going to take you on a quick tour through the process of upgrading a flight box with the new beta that allows you to connect flight box up to flight view, our new EFIS product. So I guess the first thing I ought to do is explain uh, what you get when you do this. If you have a flight box that has the AHARS module in it, you'll actually get attitude, altitude, and uh, all of the navigational information you get from the GPS. So location, uh, ground speed, uh, ground track, and all of that. Now you won't get airspeed, you won't get engine data, and you won't of course get any of the integrations with uh, other equipment like comm radios or, or transponders. But this is a great way to get started, um, and it's a very inexpensive way to test this out and see how it works. We'll also actually be offering a, uh, another module for those of you who have X-Plane, so that you can uh, upgrade a flight box with that, or just any Raspberry Pi, and use that as an interface uh, between uh, the Flight View EFIS and your X-Plane instance. So, got a few things in the works. So the first process we're going to do though is the upgrade on this guy. This is coming from the current stable release, 1.5R4, and we're going to update that to uh, the new 2.0 preview. So, first thing we'll need to do then is connect up to it. So let's switch over to a laptop. Alright, so now we're over on the laptop. And I've loaded up the email that went out the other day that actually has the, uh, the link to download the new file. So let's go find that first. It's somewhere down here in the instructions. All right. So um, da, 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 da. update the beta file here. So let's click that. Now we'll download that file. Um, once that gets downloaded, we should have everything we need there. So all right, that is downloaded to keep. All right, next thing we want to do is connect up to the flight box. So we'll come over to Wi-Fi. We've been on the internet, but we'll need to connect onto the flight box. So we'll jump over onto that as soon as that gets connected up. In fact, probably already is. We'll come over here and go to 192.168.10.1. As soon as that's connected, okay, we can see that we're talking up to um, a version 1.5 R3, okay, so that actually is the latest version that we we're shipping. So we're going to connect up to that. We're going to go to settings, and then we're going to come down here to commands, and you'll see there's an option to uh, click to select system update file. Click that, and then we'll find the file that we just downloaded, which is this update stratix 2.0 file, and then click again to install it. It takes a few seconds to transfer it over and it says, there we go, success. Wait 60 seconds and refresh home page to verify a new selection. So it does take somewhere between 60 and 90 seconds to go through the entire installation process, so we'll skip that. Okay, so we've waited our 60 seconds plus and now we're going to click OK and it will reload and notice up there it says version 2.0. Um, a couple of things to check and make sure shows over here SDR devices. That's actually the number of radio receiver modules that are on there. You want to make sure that that says 2, which means you're going to be uh, getting data on both UAT and 1090ES. Um, if you're inside, you may not get any. You may get some. You'll usually get 1090. You uh, frequently won't get any UAT anywhere on the ground. So when you're up in the air, you should start to pick that up as soon as you're within range of towers. And then if you look a little bit further down here, you see GPS hardware. And it is talking to the GPS. It doesn't have a fix, again, because we're inside in my office. Um, but it is working, and we're on version 2.0. I guess the last thing to check is, let's take a look at our AHARS over here. Yeah, okay, this one has an AHARS on it. It is sitting nice and flat, so I'm going to reset the level value. Okay, and it looks like our gyro uh, calibration might be slightly off on this. So let's come back over to Settings, and then you'll see this button here that says Calibrate Gyros. You don't want to set the AHARS orientation, that's already set, but calibrate gyros, click OK there, go back over and we'll see it levels out. And within a few seconds, we're down to where you expect that to be. Okay, so we've got good uh, data there. Once we take this thing outside, we'll start getting good uh, data on the GPS. I have no, no question of that. So now we're ready to go on to the next step, which is actually installing the FlightView software on your iPad. So hang on and we'll switch over to an iPad. Okay, so now we're over on an iPad. So the next thing we want to do is install the, the uh, 
test flight application. So we're going to go to the App Store. We're going to do a search and put in test flight. There we go. Find it there. All right, and we can just simply download it. If you haven't downloaded it before, it'll just tap Get, I think, and that'll bring it down. All right, and here we go. Open up, and welcome to Test Flight. And because I've done this before, I've already got Flight View in here. Since you haven't done it before, though, what we'll do is we'll switch over to Mail, and in here, go to that message that I sent out, and come down to the instructions, and where it says sign up to test the beta app here, tap that. I'm going to click on it. And that will actually open up Test Flight directly and take you through this process. So, let's see. Get, uh, step one, get Test Flight. Step two, start testing. So, start testing. That will bring up and ask if you want to install the Test Flight app. Tap install. And after a few seconds, it will finish downloading that, and then tap Open. Okay, we're not on the Flightbox network yet. Keep in mind that we still need to get some stuff off of uh, the Internet in order to make all this work. So if, let's just uh, hang on here. Uh, it's going to ask you this question about accessing your music library. If you want to use the integrated music feature in this to play music over Bluetooth, click OK. Otherwise, click Don't Allow, either way. And then here is the actual setup wizard. The, uh, I think they call it a setup assistant in Apple terms. So, welcome to Flight View. Tap Next. Um, it's going to ask you to subscribe. I guess before I describe this, had you not been connected to the internet, or had you been connected to the internet using cellular rather than Wi-Fi, it would have tried to get you to connect up using uh, a Wi-Fi connection, because there's some fairly large files we're going to download here. So follow those instructions, and it'll eventually take you to this subscribe option. As it says here, this is not wired up. It's not going to charge you anything. This is going to be in there. Um, the prices may not uh, be the same as they are right now. For right now, just tap the, uh, the um, monthly option, $9.99, and it'll immediately do that. Subscription active. So for this test, you don't have to worry about a subscription. Then continue. It's going to ask you to enable location services. That's because the... Uh, Flightbox is your primary GPS, but if you have GPS available on your iPad, if you have a, a cellular-enabled iPad, you'll have that, then it's going to try and use that as the secondary or backup GPS. So tap Enable Location Services, go with Always Allow, and then it's going to take you to the uh, Aviation Database Download. I'm go ahead and tell it to download that. And it usually takes well, less than a minute. It's about 90 megs, and this has all of the data that's used to draw the maps. Now, it's not actually the maps themselves. Those will come up in the next step, because we just use base maps, and then we draw all of the, uh, the airports, airspaces, etc. on top of that. So it makes the actual monthly download fairly small and fairly lightweight and easy to do. So even if you're, uh, you're out in the field and you're trying to, um, to do things with you know, a cellular connection, you can still do it, and it's not terrible. Okay, so in this next step, it's going to ask us to download maps. Now, I'm going to download the biggest map of all, which is my home state of California. I'm going to tap that and tap Begin Download. Now, California is... Ah, it's over a gig. It's a fairly large file because this has a complete set of street maps embedded in it as well. Uh, in fact, there's actually a street map view built into Flight View. So if you're flying around and you're looking down, you go, I know what that highway is. Let me see where I am exactly. Uh, you can actually toggle it into street map view and it'll show you all the streets and everything. So, but that means that the, uh, the actual data set's fairly big. So I'm going to fast forward past this. So we'll let it record. Okay, now that that's done, it's prompting us to download terrain data. So as I live right on the boundary between Northwest and Southwest, sort of runs right through the middle of the San Francisco Bay Area, I'm actually going to pick both U.S. Northwest and U.S.A. Southwest. So there, you see I've got both of those selected, and I'm going to tap Begin Download, and it will actually download both of those files which they're fairly good sized also, um, and will take a couple of minutes to download, so we'll fast forward past this as well. Before I go, I will say that both the, uh, the terrain downloads and the base maps, 
Uh, you can always download more of them, uh, all of them in fact, from the settings screen uh, that you'll see here in a little bit. So if you decided to skip past this, hit the download later button, not a big deal. Uh, you'll be missing some data on the screen when you get to it, but you'll still be able to get there eventually. Okay, at this point we've got the system downloaded and we're ready to start actually using it. So let's go ahead and tap the Let's Fly and it'll take us to the main interface. And you can see it's going to load up and we're seeing, ah, it's drawing in right now, uh, all of the information for the San Francisco Bay Area. Now across the top you'll see a bunch of little red triangles saying something's not quite right and you've got one um, circle there which is the GPS, which is yellow, which indicates it's using the onboard GPS. All of that's because we're not yet connected to our flight box. To get to the flight box, let's go back out to the main um, uh, menu here in your, I, uh, your iPad and then go to settings and this is when we're going to actually connect up to the flight box Wi-Fi network. So switch over here, pick this one which is the one we just upgraded. Then we're going to come back out here, switch back to the Flight View app, and you'll see it starts to connect some of the things. GPS is still dodgy because we're inside again and we're not uh, getting any GPS information, so it'll switch around as, as it gains and loses GPS. But you can see we now have attitude information, and here I'll move our flight box around a little bit, and you can actually see the screen move. Um, one thing you're not going to get is the engine monitor. So let's turn that bar off. You see across the bottom there's all of your engine data. Uh, below that is the button bar. To get to it, let's tap more, and then let's tap display, and see that toggle button there, EMS? You can tap that, and it clears up and gets rid of the, uh, the engine bar since we're not using it. So uh, there's actually a way to make that go away permanently, and I'll show that in another video, but that's the easy way to do that for now. And so there you go. We are now looking at the, uh, the system uh, running off of a standard flight box with... All right, so now we're outside and we actually have the, uh, the flight box sort of sitting in the sunlight, getting some, uh, some data. You can look down there and you'll see we actually have a few UAT packets coming in, some 1090 ES packets coming in. Um, the GPS is not locked yet, but it's getting there. So it's on its way to, uh, to everything up and running. AHARS is online, and you see down below, ADC, Air Data Computer, and EMS are both offline. It's because, as of yet, uh, there's no data coming in for that, and there won't be with a standard flight box. That's going to require moving over to uh, the, the, the full kit of equipment that we're offering. But for right now, you can see that we're... Oh, there we go, we've got GPS locked in, so we're ready to switch back over to Flight View. So switch back, come into Flight View. Now you see, there we go, across the top, you still see uh, ADC and EMS are flagged. And you're still seeing that we're getting ground speed rather than air speed for the value. But we actually have GPS lock, and we're, uh, we're doing what we need to. So there is the basic process of taking an existing flight box, upgrading it with the, uh, the 2.0 um, beta code, and then um, connecting to it from uh, an iPad, running the beta version of FlightView. Thank you very much.